A big hello to all the lovely people out there. I am Dr. Kiro Chandra Panda, back with a new topic that is central masking and this is in continuation to my previous video on masking. Thank you for clicking. Here we go. Central masking is defined as an elevation of the threshold in the test ear due to the introduction of masking noise in the non-test ear. Even though the masking noise is insufficient to affect the threshold of the test ear by crossing across to the test cochlea. It is called central masking because it is assumed to be due to some property of the central nervous system wherein the brain is unable to detect weak signals coming from one ear when there are stronger signals coming from the other ear. The magnitude of the central masking varies from 5 dB to 10 dB. And the amount of central masking increases as the intensity of the masking noise increases in the non-test ear. So central masking is defined as the elevation of the threshold in the test ear due to the introduction of masking in the non-test ear. Even though the masking noise is insufficient to affect the threshold of the test ear by crossing across to the test cochlea. Central masking is so called because it is due to some property or some activities of the central nervous system. Central masking is important in clinical testing because all the bone conduction systems in clinical audiometers are calibrated according to the normal ear responses with masking noise in the opposite ear. That is, it is assumed that the calibrated bone conduction thresholds are always obtained with masking in the non-test ear. Therefore, it is logical to think and it is inferred that if there is no masking noise in the non-test ear, then the bone conduction thresholds would be better by 5 to 10 dB. Let us take this example. In the above case, the unmarked bone conduction thresholds were probably coming from the appropriate cochlea. However, there was a shift of 5 dB when masking was applied to the non-test ear. This shift is assumed to be due to central masking and therefore the marked thresholds are considered to be correct thresholds. Because bone conduction systems are calibrated assuming that masking is in the non-test ear at the time of testing, unmasked bone conduction thresholds actually underestimate sensor neural loss by 5 to 10 dB. We should therefore usually get a small airborne gap in unmasked audiograms even if the loss is bilateral, symmetric, bilateral symmetrical sensory neural hearing loss. In the above case, if we mark the left bone conduction threshold, it would probably match down to the left air conduction threshold due to central masking. Air bone gaps of 10 dB or less are therefore considered to be insignificant in the management of a case. Guys, I have uploaded three audiograms and it will be highly appreciated if the queries are reciprocated with proper answers and comments. You can give your answers and comments in the comment box of this video. In audiogram number one, the query is at which frequencies do we mask the right bone conduction thresholds? This is the audiogram number two and the query is at which frequencies do we mark the right air conduction thresholds? And the last one uh, that is audiogram number three which cochlea is hearing the bone conduction signals? Query number one. And query number two is, if we mark the right bone conduction thresholds and they come down to 50 decibel hearing level, do we need to mark the right air conduction thresholds? Friends and colleagues, I would request you to kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel to know more about otolaryngology and audiology. Thank you and good on you.